Hello Salesforce Ohana. In this video, I'm going to be going over the different types of stored record data that you can have inside of Salesforce Flow Builder. We've got some really cool new ways of storing information inside of flows. I'll be going over some different use cases and refactoring an old flow that I have with the new automatically store all fields data selection. Let me know in the comments down below which of the different stored record data types you've been using. So let's take a look at this get record get contacts that I have here, which is getting a list of contacts whose birthdays are the current date, which is today. So when I look at the different types of selections that we have to store record data, what you're probably going to see if you have some older flows that were migrated into the new lightning flow builder is that the choose fields and assigned variables advance is most likely going to be selected so a lot of times when you had the older flows they got migrated in this way because some of the other options did not exist so when we take a look at this you've most likely created a record variable to hold all of your information that you're collecting and you collect all of that information one by one so you know if you need the birthday you add that name so on if you hadn't need any additional fields you would come on here and say uh, hey, I need the email let me select that one same thing with uh, any other items that you would want to have in here let's say like only the first name so using this method of variable assignment was very good in the past because one, it's all that we really had. We have a variable, we set it up to have exactly the fields that we want it. We know exactly what's in there. So that works out really well. And then we're going to use it inside of our process. So let's just take a quick look at that. And I'm gonna run this flow. Uh, really what it does is it just displays the name, birth date, and contact information. Let's save this and debug. Run over here. So now we're seeing the name, the date, and the record ID of that specific item, which works out pretty well for what we need. Similarly, if we wanted to separate these out into individualized variables, we could go ahead and select that option. And then from here, we could set all of the fields that we wanted to assign. So let's say for our contact birthday, we had a date field that we wanted to specifically set to the birthday value that we get back from that contact. We could go ahead and set all of the individual fields and we know exactly what we have. This comes in handy when we're doing things like interacting with Apex or using additional actions where maybe they already have a variable for that action and we just want to set it or there's other types of interactions that we want to specifically set one individual variable. Maybe this isn't just going to one contact, this is going to be spread to a bunch of other uh, contacts or be used in a bunch of other places. So that's just one example of how you can use the store in separate variables and how I use it is for the most part, storing it to be used in different sections and actions. So we have two other selections in here choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest and automatically store all fields. So when we choose fields and let Salesforce do the rest, it is sort of what we are used to in the fact that we are selecting all of the individual values by itself. So let's get name, let's get the birthday. And I think that's all we need for our screen flow. So let's go ahead and update this. And we can see here that one, our input values are the same, but if we actually run this debug, nothing is going to show up because we haven't set any of those values for the contact record variable. So let's update our screen flow with our new values. Yeah. And we can see here that we actually have a single record variable called contact from get, which is different from our input contact. This is automatically created as soon as we're selecting that let Salesforce do the rest. It generates that record variable on the fly and lets us use it pretty much wherever we want it once it's set. So let's go ahead and update our birthday and let's put our contact in here. Hit done, save, and let's see what prints out when we do this. So now we're seeing the same results. We've updated this so that we're selecting our specific fields, which is great, um, but there is still some room for improvement. 
let's say that we come in here and now we need an additional field of, I don't know, let's just add the name in there. If we wanted their first name and we hit save and debug this closing the other screen and we're seeing that something went wrong that the name was not assigned what we forgot to do was go back to our get contact records add in the first name value and then save debug go through the entire process again making sure that we have the correct fields and now we're seeing a band on here which is great now for our final option, which is automatically store all fields, which is one of my new favorites that I've been using a lot recently in all of my flows. And this will just store all the fields in that get contact record variable that we've been using there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next on that. Basically it was saying, hey, this is gonna delete a lot of the references that you're already using. You're gonna have to recreate them. Um, but since we were already using this in certain areas, we are good to go with that. And then I'm going to hit save. So let's go ahead and debug this, run it, and check it out. All the fields are there. And then if we go back to our screen flow, let's add in the last name. Save, debug, closing out the old screen. And we'll see that we didn't have to do anything. Amanda Smith comes up because Salesforce has automatically stored all of the variable values for us. All right, and real quickly, let's refactor one of our old flows to use this new method, which is really nice and slick. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed by this flow, go ahead and watch my previous video on flow loops where we build this entire flow so you can get an understanding of it. Uh, basically what this is doing is checking and updating the primary contact on an opportunity. What we want to do here is rewrite some of these record gets so that it will use this new method of getting all the fields and be a little bit cleaner. We'll actually be able to remove a lot of these record variables that we don't need in here. So let's start out with the get account by the name. So first off, we do a search for account by its name. And you can see that we're doing the standard store record data uh, advanced here. So let's switch this to automatic. And one thing that we're going to need to know is that we'll need to refactor all of the places where object account is to this new value that we're using. And that's basically what this is saying here. All right, so now that we've updated that to get all of the fields, I'm pretty sure this get opportunities by account name is going to be the first area where we're going to need to update this object account reference. So let's delete that. And we can see here that this was automatically created and we're gonna type in ID, click out so that works. While we're here, let's also update this one from this collection to store all of the fields automatically. Now let's review some of the areas where these objects were used at. So we can see that this object account was used in the record choice contact. Let's try to drill down on that record choice contact, which is here. Let's open that up, remove this and then use the ID. Perfect. And really now this object account hasn't been used anywhere. So let's go ahead and delete it. The next thing is for this collection of opportunities. Uh, we can see that it's used two places in a loop and displayed in text. So let's go for this loop here. We don't need this collection anymore because we've automatically got it from our get records. Perfect. And then we have loop opportunity collections, which is probably over here. And boom. And then we're displaying the information in display text before opportunity. Where do we have that? It's probably this one. Let's just display our get records. There we go. And now this whole collection can be removed. Perfect. We've just refactored this flow to use the automatically created get record values 
that Salesforce generates for us. And if we save and run this flow, let's debug this. So this should search for the name of the opportunity. Hey, we're looking and we're seeing all of the same information that we had before. Let's go to the next screen, pick the primary contact, and then boom, let's go to next. And we're all done, everything executed uh, just the same. So some key takeaways, the new automatically store all field values inside of the get requests really help clean up your flows and make it so that you don't have to have a lot of temporary variables inside of your flows. You can use what's automatically generated for you, which makes it really easy. I've started almost exclusively using storing all the field values for my flows. Let me know in the comment section down below if you found other ways of using the other types of storing data and how storing all the values may have a downside. Thank you all so much for watching. If this video was helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have additional ideas on flows or Salesforce or concepts that you want me to go over, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, I believe in you.